my fellow Caymanians and residents, early in January, I urged government to reconsider their plans for a proposed new US $400 million 30-year bullet bond, borrowing that will saddle future generations of Caymanians with the millstone of debt to pay for this government's spending spree. Curiously, the government just recently voted through its 2022-2023 budget plans, but made no mention of this new borrowing during the extensive budget debates. In response to the public's increasing concerns, the finance minister attempted to reassure the country on the need for government to borrow, whilst at the same time claiming how much better off the country was under his financial stewardship. We also learned for the first time about even more plans for spending that government did not include in their budget. Yet, no indication was given on how this added spending would impact the budget deficit. Perhaps that is the reason why a 30-year bullet bond is now being considered. All of this has helped shine a spotlight on the government's spending and subsequent debt plans, including that $400 million bullet bond that won't be repaid for 30 years, yet with the country paying interest on the entire amount every single year of those 30 years. You might have thought the government would be keen to show that it has learned the lessons of the country's last bullet bond, but instead seems determined to repeat that unfortunate mistake. I really hope they reconsider. A recent headline in the Cayman Compass asked whether it is time for government to incur more debt. The country already knows my view that the government should only borrow if necessary, including for significant projects that the government cannot do on its own. The Region Waste Energy Plant is one example of this. However, to get an independent perspective, the Compass spoke to Caribbean economist Marla Dukaran who provided excellent insight. Ms. Dukaran told the Compass that government borrowing is not necessarily bad. It can be helpful. But she cautioned that going into debt is a decision that should not be taken lightly in these uncertain times. And she warned the Cayman Islands not to fall into the debt trap that has plagued many countries in the region. Ms. Dukaran also said that Cayman could benefit from borrowing if it did not have the funds to finance those important and necessary expenditure items, and once the terms and conditions of the borrowing make sense relative to the project it is financing. My opposition colleagues and I heartily agree with the points raised by Ms. Dukaran. Government borrowing can be necessary, but government should seek to achieve its goals by first spending money it has and borrowing only for what it abs is absolutely necessary. During the budget debate, we urged the government not to return the country to half a billion dollars of more debt, which is exactly where they are taking us. This government, just as the two previous governments did, should prioritize their plans and spending over the whole four-year term and not try to get every project that every minister wants completed in only two years. To achieve their goals, government should utilize the almost $1 billion in annual revenues to pay for day-to-day -day costs and capital projects. Once that is done, then consider borrowing for what is necessary, or in Ms. Dukaran's words, for those important and necessary expenditure items. I implore the minister to avoid the name calling, not throw up smoke screens and innuendos. That is not what the Caymanian people expect. Instead, he should be willing to engage in a meaningful debate about government's plans. I acknowledge that the government has the right to move its agenda forward, but the people of the Cayman Islands expect the government to manage the people's money prudently and wisely and not unnecessarily put them in debt. And they also expect the opposition to do its job and its duty to sound the alarm bell if we see the government varying off course. That is exactly what I have done. I would not have had to do so if the government had been open and transparent to begin with. 
If the government will not listen to the opposition, then I hope it will pay heed to the points raised in the local media, including those cautions given by economist Marla Dukara. Thank you for your attention, and may God continue to bless these beautiful islands that we call home. Mm -hmm.